Hello class, today we're going to be starting our um, ecology section with chapter 17. Uh, and so in 17 we look at classification and how organisms are um, named and also organized into groups. So to start with today we're going to look at an introduction to classification of organisms. First um, in that if you're using the notes packet, species of organisms, almost two million species of organisms have been described. You don't have to write this next part down but just so you get an idea kind of of what um, we're looking at, there's more discovered each year. So um, we're not um, limited to the number of species that we know right now because there's places we either haven't been like deep down in the ocean where there might be some individual species that we haven't identified or even seen before. Um, and also with evolution there could be new species that are developing or evolving over time. Here's an example of a new species that was found in 2012 in Ecuador. Just to give you an idea, you can um, look up new species. Um, even recently in 2013 we had a couple new species that were just in the paper um, as something that was new, newly discovered. All right, so what is classification? It is the arrangement of organisms into groups based on similarities. So you would do this just naturally. If you had a whole bunch of stuff out on the desk, you might organize like your papers that have been graded and you might organize papers that have not been graded, um, papers that um, don't have anything written on them. So you kind of make this organization among the things that you own. And the same thing happens when we look at species. Classification is also known as taxonomy, which is um, the study of species and classifying species. And a taxonomist will identify and name new organisms. So why do we do this? Um, basically to accurately name organisms, to have a system to name organisms so that we are not just randomly naming them or we, um, as a scientist, you might say, I found this new species, but it's already been identified and named. So it gives us a good um, checks and balances, basically, to know um, the, the species that we I'd have identified already. It does help prevent misnaming, like starfish and jellyfish that aren't really fish. And it uses the same language. So for um, people that speak different languages, this puts it all into one scientific name using Latin or Greek so that everyone, no matter what language they speak, can identify the organism. And here's our example, a seahorse, which is not actually a horse, as a misnomer. There's also can be confusion using different languages for names and so what we'll do instead of having this just be a skunk is we use a genus and species name and for a skunk that is Mephitis Mephitis. So early taxonomists, um, the first real taxonomist was Aristotle and he separated organisms based on plants and animals, whether they were a plant or an animal, and then where they lived, land, sea, or air. Now from this we've modified it um, based on Linnaeus who was alive from 1707 to 1778 and he's considered the father of taxonomy. He classified organisms by form and structure. So you do need to know the difference between what Aristotle did and what Linnaeus did and currently we use Linnaeus's form of classification. He developed seven levels of classification, which we'll get to here in another slide, and he developed the naming system that we still use today, which is called binomial nomenclature. This binomial nomenclature, if you're using the notes packet, it's a two-word name and we name them with the genus and the species name. There are other names that will classify them into the broader categories, but to get specific, its name, it's kind of like a first name and a last name is the genus and species. But if we were going to characterize it like a first name and a last name, it would be more like we rearranged our name to be last first. So last name, first name, because the genus name is a little more broad and it covers more individuals and then the species name is very specific. So if you're in a family, um, your last name is the same for your group of individuals that live in your house, but your first name is specific to you. Well, the way that this works is that the genus name would be like your last name and the species name would be like your first name. 
Now it is important that you know how to write this. We write it um, either italicized if we are using a computer for typing it um, and we would capitalize the genus name but not the species name. But if we are writing it, we underline it. So that's a key thing to know. You do need to be able to do that. And you need to know these steps and how we um, write its genus and species name. To show you an example of this, um, we have this American robin, which is called Turtus migratorius. So Turtus is the genus name, and migratorius is the species name. Here's a couple examples as well, although we have one little mistake on here. It's a mistake in the picture. Um, this here should be Arctos, and this here should be Maritimus. But if you notice here, um, the genus name for giant panda, and then its species name. Here we have genus and species, and then here we have genus and species. Notice that the genus name for grizzly bear and poly, polar bear are the same, Ursus. And then, so that would be like your last name. And then the specific name or the species name is a little bit more specific to them to identify them separately. Okay, a taxon is a category for organisms. And there's um, a hierarchy we're going to look at um, starting from the most broad to the most specific. These are domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, and then genus and species. All right, so we're going to put these into, if you have the notes packet, into the big upside down triangle. The domain does not go in the triangle. It goes above the triangle. And so if you are filling in that diagram, it would be like this. OK. Domain is our broadest category. And there's three domains which we're going to get to in just a few minutes. In the kingdom, there's six different kingdoms. Um, from there, there's many different um, possibilities as we go down. But our broadest category has three domains and then six kingdoms. Um, once you get down here, this is going to be one um, set of individuals. OK, it's going to be very specific. So these are some examples of what those would be. Kingdom, Animalia, if you want to put an example in next to your kingdom spot on your triangle. Phylum, Chordata, meaning they have some sort of spinal cord. Mammalia, meaning that they are mammals. And if you notice here, when we go from Animalia down to Chordata, we lose the starfish. So they're no longer there. Okay, and then when we go to, from chordata to mammal, we lose the snake. And then when we go from mammalia to carnivore, carnivora, we lose the squirrel. And then when we go to ursidae, we lose the fox. And then when we go to ursus, we lose the panda. And then when we get down here to the bottom, we have ursus arctos. So species is going to be the most specific. And this one, if you want the actual name... Ursus Arctos, and it would be underlined. If you need a way to remember it, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species, you can remember this little sentence, King Philip came over for good spaghetti. Kind of a silly way to remember it, but it might help you. All right, so if you look at the next um, part in your notes packet, we're going to fill these in, um, kind of give some characteristics of these things. So we have three domains, bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. And then we have six kingdoms, eubacteria, archaea bacteria, plantae, animalia, fungi, and protista. Okay, so in your notes packet, I actually have the domain underneath the six kingdoms. So just be aware of that as you're filling them in. Domains are the most broad. We have RK, eubacteria, and eukarya. 
And I would switch these when you're putting them in. Make this number one and this number two, just based on the way we have them uh, when we do the kingdoms in a few minutes. So our K bacteria, um, these are considered the original forms of life. They live in extreme environments. And um, they are going to be unicellular and prokaryotic. We'll get to that in just a second. Under U bacteria, um, you can write this in, unicellular prokaryotes, which means they have no nucleus. You don't necessarily have to write that in. We've talked about that before. And then um, the eukarya are m more complex. Um, they have a nucleus and they have the organelles. So if you write those things in, that would be fine. Um, with RK, you can put um, unicellular here as well and live in extreme environments would be fine here. You can see here what that looks like. Um, domain 1 includes only one kingdom. Domain 2 has just one kingdom. And then domain eukarya has multiple things that fit in it in the tree of life. OK, so our six kingdoms now. Um, if we take a look um, on your notes packet, you have a space that you can put each of these. And this is really what you're going to put in. Put this one in first, U bacteria, and it goes with the domain bacteria. Our K bacteria, put that one in second. Uh, so first, let me go back. U bacteria is unicellular, single celled, and prokaryotic, meaning no nucleus. Um, some examples would be human disease. Our K bacteria is unicellular and prokaryotic. Um, also, put in here that they could be autotrophic and heterotrophic, depending on which ones you see. And they live in extreme environments. We already wrote that in. OK, protista, you'll put three. They're eukaryotic, unicellular, and multicellular. An example so that you can put one in is algae. Um, plant A, put that four. They're multicellular and eukaryotic um, and autotrophic, meaning they make their own food. Animalia, put that five. Multicellular, eukaryotic, and heterotrophic. And then fungi, you can put that six. They're multicellular, eukaryotic, heterotrophic, and some examples would be decomposers, yeast, mold, mildew. Okay, so that's where we're going to end today. You should have through the three domains and the six kingdoms. Make sure when you're looking at the domains and the kingdoms that you do know um, have identifying pieces to each of those kingdoms that you can identify them based on these traits that are given to you.